I will be there forevermore. There's a special star that shines every evening in your eyes. Special star that shines. It's gonna hit a lullaby. Special gun can prove Aslan. Good. I'm Zanel Mholi, reporting live from South Africa. I'm a visual activist. I take photographs. The kind of work that I do is on queer politics, gender politics, politics of race. I'm fascinated by LGBTI individuals in different spaces. I've learned how beautiful this place is, how important how our lives are, and why we should preserve a history about our own people, about us. Very, very interesting township. I've done a lot of shots here. I shot the first gay wedding here in 2002. I don't even know that there are lesbians who own dogs. This is for the first time that I know someone who owns a dog. Aye. The light is good here. Yeah. I'm going to shoot a follow-up portrait of Dumi. I used to be a hairstylist. Really? Yeah. We had a life before we came out. <laughs> Somebody asked me how influential am I when it comes to this portrait. And I said to people, I just want people to look good. Oh. I really, really want people to be fresh. We're going to the Popo Pride. I'm when I read the address. We're connected by photography. I was doing photo shoot here in Guatemala. And I thought that she was just a very nice person to be in the Faces and Faces series that I'm working on. You have a young generation that is growing up now who doesn't share maybe the same, you know, commonalities like lesbians who, who were out there in the 90s or late 80s before South Africa gained independence. The young lesbians now, they are socialites, connected by the social medias and all of that, and they're free when it comes to photographs, etc., etc. I know maybe some people get surprised when you start photographing. I was surprised, this. but the first time it was fun. I had fun and I didn't know that I'm photogenic. So since then, I like to take myself pictures. So this is three years later. We are in the same township. And the township is so popular with... Um, the killings. With uh, <laughs> no gay lives. There are a lot of gay people in Guatemala. And also it has since become notorious for hate crimes mm. because in 2008, a known bad lesbian was brutally murdered here. 2012 was one of the most painful years in our history. We lost a lot of uh, members of our communities and hate crimes specifically, curative rapes and, and lesbian murders became one of the, of the brutality that is stained in our brains forever. We live in fear. Death happened to bind us. Hate crimes have become a binding factor for the LGBTI communities. We come together to either give support or to confirm that somebody has been killed. Then that person becomes a statistic. Another case number becomes part of our history. And what are we doing about it? Do we always go and attend funerals and then after funerals you go home, you wait for another funeral? What? You have to document. You are forced to document. Transformation by I don't only do it for a second. Transformation by Zanela Moholi. By you, this is your head. I'm using visuals as a way of creating awareness, capturing the moments those truths and realities the world will learn about our cultures. I could give you something tangible and say, feel it, this is it. See, you invited to be in that space even though you were not there. So look, please put it in and out. We're shooting faces and faces, not fashion. <laughs> mm, ah, okay. yeah. yeah. There is the other side of me when I perform. There is the other side of me when I'm me. How will you engage with me? You look so gay, yeah? Nice. Actually, you look like a drag queen. <laughs> Most of the time, I work with people that I know. 
They are no strangers to me. I call the people who are in my photographs participants because you partake in a project that will inform many audiences. And when it comes to these young lesbians you are teaching? Any person who is interested in learning is welcome to learn how to take photographs. I provide cameras as long as a person will be able to document what will then become a contribution towards Inganyeso, which is the organization that I formed. One cannot do these major projects alone, which is why I invited people to come on board and work with me. And it means that it's not lonely anymore. Take five. <laughs> I started this project calling Inganyeso to ensure that uh, people who are featuring in my photographs get a platform to share their own lives and work. People get to read about sex, people get to read about anything that they will never, in as much as South Africa is so democratic, they'll never see that kind of text in the mainstream media. Most of the team members, we are black lesbians. People occupy different position within the Inganiso crew. Bongi is a documenter and Lirato is a graduate, she's a journalist. And we just posted a new story on Pep Smear <laughs> that, that she, she wrote this morning. Now I had to beg Lirato to cut that hair. And look how beautiful this person is. It is Lirato's portrait in 2010. So we're gonna have a nice follow-up shot. I train and I will continue to train with or without funding. Because if I wait for someone to validate my existence, it will mean that I'm shortchanging myself. Recently, we had to decide whether we buy a fridge where we live or we buy a new lens. So we sleep on the floor, it's nice. Documenting with my crew, it's fabulous. I love the people that I work with. A lot of people are reading this yeah. Pep Smear thing. For, you know, lesbian or even butch women, it's something that's sick, if I don't know if I can say taboo. But I don't know, you said you need me to revise it. No, you have to do part two. Part two, what's I part feel two like about? You the most. I don't think that you gave it your all, like how you write when yeah. you tackle the issues of hate crimes and yeah. other. What would you like to read about in the mainstream? Not even read, even when seeing, you know, I'd like to see an advert of a family where it's the mother and the mother and the baby, you know, and they're fighting germs in the household. It shouldn't only be about the violence and the homophobia. We want to bring about change in spaces that are queerphobic. We still have religious leaders who want to use homosexuality as scapegoat for their own hate. Instead of dealing with poverty, instead of dealing with the corrupted systems that we find ourselves in, and that's what leads to many hate crimes. See where there's white concrete wall? Is where Nukolo Nukwaza was found. Nukolo Nukwaza is a victim of hate crime who was brutally murdered. Her head was crushed with a big stone. Her teeth were all over the place. Nukolo Nukwaza's children are not the first to be offended by hate crimes. What will people say to the children what happened to their mothers? Nukolo's case is still outstanding. I don't know how far do they, they investigate these cases. We all document that lesbian funeral. Every person who has a cell phone with a camera, it doesn't matter what quality. And all of us come together in one space and download and share. You make that document viral. We want to say to our government, this is what I'm talking about when I talk of a lesbian funeral. It's my wish that we could find positive lesbian icons on Wikipedia as well, other than to always find brutal murders. You Google black lesbians in South Africa, you'll see what you see there. There's nothing that focuses on same-sex love versus these hate crimes. When do we start talking about intimacy? I, I produce pictures that are intimate because I'm an intimate being. This intimacy that disrupts the perpetrator leads to us being killed. It starts by the same sex love that is disorganizing the mindset of the homophobe. More education is needed. 
mainstream communities need to come on board and help us and ensure that there's no other hate crime. Projecting positivity sometimes can lead to the change. Projecting brutality and violations could lead to further violence. So I think that we need to find a balance in which we project these realities. Let's go to the beach. Eat. Let's go get away. Bang, bang. What they gonna say? Hello, beauty. Inganyiso is a Limpopo Pride 2013. I came with the Inganyiso crew last night. Once we're done here, we're gonna put it up on social networks to make sure that people who might not be here understand what is taking place and get the visuals. People think that pink cities are Cape Town, Deben and Johannesburg. People cannot even imagine that there's been proper pride. It's very important for us to say that LGBTI individuals are all over. Any space is possible. So we're here to celebrate with the people of this province. It's about saying I want to be counted in South African history. Claiming my full citizenship, it means that I have to write that part of history.